Hi, this is Stacy of Ellis Family Farms, and it's been turning into a hot one. At least I got a breeze today. And I want to say a couple of words before I get started on the uh, chicken coop or the chicken tractor, put it that way. Um, I don't know. I've been, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I and I hear how some of you are getting discouraged because of all this COVID stuff. And I have to admit, I get that way sometimes too. Most time, I don't care. Most time, I'm just sitting out here on the farm and doing stuff. But like I said, it was really difficult to source, sorry, to source materials for this this chicken tractor. Uh, I was up at the church this morning and we're trying, you know, because we have a clothing ministry, we just give the clothes away. We get some really cute stuff in that gets donated to us and we give it to the uh, people in our community. And in our community, it's not as bad right now because they've done a crackdown, but we got we have a lot of, of meth issues here in town. So, well, in, in this section of the county, whatever. So, you know, these guys are needing clothes. A lot of them are just getting out of jail and they need new suits of clothes. Apparently, I had the camera on Zoom and didn't realize it. Okay, so, and of course, their kids need clothes and stuff, too. So, we are, we are actually able to touch a lot of families, but we haven't had it open, you know, because everything was closed for so long. And then even as the thrift stores are opening, you know, the regular thrift stores, you know, they have rules and stuff. It's like, we got a little bitty building. And so, we're supposed to have these people follow a line we can only let one th person or, per you know, m leave the children somewhere else. <sighs> and I was at this meeting this morning and I was getting so frustrated. And, you know, everybody talking about wearing masks and stuff. And I wear a mask at the church because I respect and love these people. But they're cloth masks. They're none of them. Well, ever occasionally there's one that's filtered. So we all know <sighs> if somebody has COVID, that my mask is not going to help me and my mask is not going to keep somebody else from getting sick and so I read lips so if your mouth is covered I'm having trouble understanding you so I was really frustrated this morning and then of course you know we're at a, a meal and uh because you know how Baptists are they eat a lot and it's actually this this is nice because this is what they call the senior meal that anybody who can actually get to the church of the seniors you know elder people there and they love it and they have this this camaraderie with each other stuff like that but if you're walking around you got to wear a mask and when you sit down you can take it off and of course you can eat without your mask but then you got to put your mask back on well we you know we all know that that's not it's all virtue signaling, but I don't think these people realize. I mean, I tried to talk to a couple of them going, really? But, you know, the bottom line is if the pastor wants to be able to have people in church, he has to follow the rules. Otherwise, he won't be able to do it. So he's kind of got his hands tied, too. It just... I did, it, it kills me how we have just let this just completely, completely change our lives, and it didn't have to. And I just wanted to, in fact, I did, I left. I, I got upset. I wasn't being, I wasn't being uh, a, a nice person to be around, you know. And so I went home and I thought, yeah, I, you know, if, if we're worried about making people sick, I'll just stay home. I'll just stay home until all this COVID stuff is over. Well, I can't do that. I volunteer for a lot of stuff at that church. And I love these people and I, and so I guess when I'm at church, I'll wear a mask. And when I'm at home, I will do what the heck I want to do, you know, but and, and grieve. I'm, I'm grieving, I think, that everyone has drunk the Kool-Aid. I don't know. What is it? So I can't do anything about that. What is it? Circle of influence, circle of concern. <laughs> Apparently I have no circle of influence. And, I, and my circle of concern, it, even though I love all these people at this church, I my circle of concern is my farm. So I'm going to start working on my chicken tractor.
finished getting the hardware cloth on. There's a couple little puckers here and there, but we've got enough staples that I don't think that it's going to be an issue. It's looking pretty sturdy. And we got wind, sorry. So it's all the way around. We may end up having to trim this one. I'm not exactly sure why Tom did it that way, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I bet you we're going to end up trimming that. So my next step now is I'm going to use what's on there and make and cover the door. So let's get started. I wanted to show you the conduit uh, pieces that Tom had done. He put, I know he put marks. I saw them somewhere. Maybe he hasn't, okay. Anyway, the line here that says center, he said that is the center of it. But then he, the instructions say to five inches to the right of it, um, put the another mark. And apparently that has something to do with how you to uh, set the conduit bender so when we get to that part we'll explain it to you again but that's what those marks mean another thing that we haven't been able to source though well i mean i can go buy one but i don't want to spend 30 to 35 dollars for a conduit bender for four pieces of conduit so we were hoping that we could borrow some from friends because we got a lot of handy people around here but apparently they don't do conduit bending so now we're on the, now I'm trying to find a way to bend conduit. We may have to spend another $30, $35 to, for four pieces of conduit. We'll have to see. All right, Tom is helping me tonight and uh, he wants to show us some of the things he learned with it because actually I'm glad he's doing this because I probably would not have been able to do this by myself. But let's, let's show you what we've learned with this one. Okay, when you're bending your 45s on the sides here, the book tells you to put the pipe bender at the end of the pipe. If you do that, when you bend your 45, you don't end up with enough overhang. So I was running out about an inch past, and that gives us a little more. So you got a two before to screw to, so it gives you a little more on each side than what you would have if you strictly by the book. All right, Tom has drilled two holes in each end of all four of these pieces. Now remember, we bought five pieces of conduit and four of them are the ones that have been bent to for the structure of the roof. And then we've got the one left that's still straight and that'll be, that'll be the ridge across the top. So I believe we're ready to go try to screw these into place. All right, okay, something else that we learned on this corner here too, not only uh, did we need to come up a little bit further, but we had accidentally bent it too much and they were not, we had kind of a, a thing where it wasn't matching up to the frame. So Tom actually straightened, he took a piece of rebar and he straightened it a little bit more. And so now these are matching up to the frame more securely. Yeah, so you can see that her nerves right up against the wood and that's what we want. So that's another thing that we learned as we're going along here.
Well, I was glad to have Tom help me with this. So we got the four pieces up. Now, uh, because the, I don't know, we'll check this out. The chicken wire is four foot long or wide, and that's what we did. We spaced this four foot because we didn't want to put anything here because that'd add more stress to an already uh, stressed joint. And that left, so we've got four feet space here for the chicken wire and another four foot space over here with chicken wire and this left two feet in the middle. And we're trying to decide what we do at the middle with it, but, and we'll, we'll get to there when we get there, but uh, that's, that's what we got so far. And I've got the piece on top. I can, I can put it on tomorrow and uh, we, we can start wrapping this thing up. Well, I have to finish the door and put it on, but. But, wow, finally coming together a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Well, that's all I got for today. Um, the sun is about to go down, so I'm going to set up for the uh, sunset, and I'm going to go take a shower, get, 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 try to get my crazy hair under control. But um, I'm pleased with what we got done today, and I'm, I'm pleased that we're getting something done. So, yeah. But maybe we can get the rest of it done tomorrow. I hope so. I don't know. But whatever we get done is one step closer than where we were the day before. Remember, if you like this video and other, uh, other videos like this, subscribe to my channel and share it with other people, especially other people like me who don't know what they're doing. And we're not stopping. We're going to get it done and bumble our way through it. And, and uh, so you can see that no matter what, we, we keep going and we're going to take control of, of what we eat and how we live. And uh, yeah, subscribe. Thanks.